friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tori. If you're new here, I am feeling much better. Thank you all so much for your patience. I decided to kick this uh, midweek video off with harvesting some things from the garden. So I'm harvesting some roses here. They've seen some of their last days, but most of them still have some medicinal purposes to them. So I am picking a mixture of fresh roses and a mixture of uh, maybe just died a day ago roses if that makes sense and I'm going to use them for some things and going to bring them to the kitchen bring them to my drying rack and show you what I like to use these roses for so I have about three to four recipes for you today and then we are going to go back out in the afternoon and grab some more things from the garden so I was very fortunate this year to get a good harvest of these roses I usually do and I end up drying them in my drying rack and I will have everything linked that you may need in the description box. So welcome if you're new. Let me know what you are growing this year in your garden. I would love it if you hit the subscribe button. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let's get into our day. So right there I was showing you some roses that I've already dried and they've been in there for about a month. I'm lucky here in Colorado it is pretty dry. We don't have much humidity. I, I should uh, knock on wood there because it would be great to have rain but I am able to keep those in my garage and they dry out bone dry. But if you are in a humid area I would suggest finding some sort of indoor grow rack, indoor drying rack and you could even dehydrate these if you want but I just find that this is easier. So I am putting Putting some of those rose petals in some boiling water and that will be some rose toner and then on the shelf here I am just going to make a rose oil and a rose tincture so I need fresh rose petals for those I always suggest starting with fresh rose petals but you know if you have dried or maybe you're buying from a store it's okay you can still use them I always approach my herbal journey in that way I use what I have on hand there are some um, herbs and flowers that of course you have to follow specific rules but roses are very resilient and they're an amazing thing to have in the garden so my rose tincture here will be the first thing we're starting with I'm just filling my jar and then I am putting some hundred proof vodka over top of the actual roses you can use something like an Everclear or something more powerful but you don't want it to burn too much and a lot of people question if they can use glycerin you absolutely can but it will reduce your shelf life So I frequently get questions about my tinctures and I have videos about these medicinal flowers and herbs that I like to put into these strong alcohols. And just for clarity, I'm not taking shots of rose infused vodka. They are micro doses, micro drips. You can actually find more alcohol in a glass of orange juice than you can with these, but they have powerful benefits and I encourage every single one of you to look into it. They are healing. They can help 
help and they have taken over my entire household. I We don't use pharmaceuticals and I encourage everyone to do the same. Just look into it because uh, it's, it's a scary, scary entity that's out there and I really feel like they are kind of running the world at this point. So an earwig has come off my arm here and I am not a fan of earwigs. Some bugs are beneficial but not these. Don't like them. Anyways, I went out to my second rose bush because I ran out and when I do have my rose oil, I do like to have a more pigmented rose oil. So these dark pink roses are better for that and I'm just putting a mixture of oils in here and that's okay to do too. So I have grapeseed oil, I have jojoba oil which is usually my oil of choice and then I have a little bit of sweet almond and I'm just going to let that sit in a cool and dark area, both of these, for six weeks and they will be good to go. So rose oil I like to use on my skin. You can use it as a perfume. It's not too fragrant but it's nice to balance the skin out and get some moisture. And then the rose toner that you will see soon, that's a nice little even balance for melasma or skin spots or maybe scarring. It really helps with that. And then the tincture I just take drops of for anxiety, inflammation. I take it for joint pain. Rose is really just such an amazing flower. And all these are going to do is go into a cool and dark place. So let me know if you do different things with your roses. I totally want to hear about it. And you know, I'll probably take some heat from this, but I am okay. I'm a seasoned, uh, I guess, content creator. This is where I get a lot of my recipes. This is the Witch's Herbal Apothecary. And this is a perfect example of not judging a book by its cover. I feel like a lot of us are so drawn to wording and we're not really looking at the content. So I encourage you to look into this. I will be the first one to tell you I am not a witch. Most of you know about my spirit spirituality, but you really have to look into some of these recipes because working with the seasons, especially when you're a female, just has so many powerful properties. So yes, I bought this book and it's okay to do that. And I think it's so silly when I get comments like that, uh, specifically about music that I listen to or books that I read or content that I share just because I choose to heal my body naturally and grow a garden it it shouldn't be associated with this dark magic and I think it's very very silly that we've been conditioned to believe that so you know do what's best for you do what's best for your journey and really start thinking about what serves you all right it is quite a bit later I'm out here with my spooky bucket because there's a few more things almost tripped of course uh that we need to harvest eventually we'll harvest some of the thistle and some of the milkweed, but I'm just ready. Uh, I'd say maybe like in a month or so when they reach their full potential, we'll harvest that. But we have chamomile to harvest. We could harvest some yarrow, but I'm just liking how that looks. And I want my guest who's coming to see how beautiful it is. So I'm not gonna harvest that right now, but uh, normally I'd harvest in a basket. I guess my husband uh, uh, donated them, which is fine. That's okay. I will harvest in this bucket here, but we have some chamomile and normally I would try and harvest in the morning or the, I don't know, late afternoon, but this is the time we have. So that's what we're going to do. And then we'll put those in the dryer. So I have my helper here. He's going to help me grab this chamomile, but I was talking about books and I do have the witch's herbal apothecary, but I have hundreds of books on medicinals and I have some linked in my Amazon store, but honestly, I found a lot at yard sales, local yard sales. I found some at the library's 25 cent sale and I just do my research. Honestly, I think finding local plants that work for you is a great topic to dive into if you're new to this and really start experimenting. I would suggest experimenting with teas or botanicals first, and then you can move on into tinctures. Please remember that these are plants. A lot of them aren't going to hurt you. They are going to aid in your journey. So I kind of experimented on myself. I took that risk, quote unquote, and then went from there. I know what is good for my family. I also know what I can do for children versus adults. So that's something else that you can involve yourself with. 
I am certified through the Herbal Academy, and you can do that too. It is a paid uh, membership or a paid course, but I learned so much from it, and I like to share that knowledge. So I don't think you have to be certified. I just felt like I needed that, I guess, uh, as a content creator, giving out this information. I have my helper with me here, but next is the pineapple sage. So we just got a little bit of chamomile and these two I actually just keep together because I use them in the same tea blend and they're great for stress and anxiety. I always add a uh, pineapple sage. If you can't find that, look for Furman's red sage or something of that variety. If you ask a gardening person, they'll probably know. Um, I'm not sure about like Home Depot or Lowe's, but you never know. There's always someone knowledgeable. So when in doubt reference the internet but um i can find pineapple sage relatively easy and it comes back every year and it grows prolifically so we really enjoy it and what you do i'm going to teach why here just so he remembers you just take it and pull it off kind of like when i prune my petunias like whenever there's any dead to it i just take it off it's kind of the exact same way it should just easily pull and then you go from there. I even pull some of the older stuff because honestly, they've only been gone for a day or two and there's still some medicinal benefits. So might as well not let it go to waste here, but you just pull them right off and then they'll look sad for a day, maybe even a night, and then they will grow back again. So it's pretty amazing. I think pineapple sage is great. This is one of those flowers, herbs, whatever you wanna call it, uh, that I think to myself, like what if I did a whole farm of just uh, Furman's Red? Because honestly, I feel like I could grow it really well. We'll see about PA, the humidity kind of throws me, but we'll see. Um, as you can see, that's it. And then I'm just going to take this and put it in the dryer. I could probably harvest some Swiss chard tomorrow and maybe we'll do some chard and beans with a little bit of bacon and go from there. That would be a hearty meal that we could use from the garden, but everything is looking great. You know, uh, like I said, I have a lot of purslane growing and a lot of you tell me you cook with that. So medicinally, not too many benefits, but you can cook with that. I have peppers coming up and then I do have valerian and I do have some thyme. Time. time is great for sickness. Valerian is good for sleepiness. You need to check on that if you're doing uh, the kids' sleepiness, though. Valerian's not the best when it comes to kids. But then this is going to be the mature valerian. This is what it looks like. And a lot of these plants, most of them are all edible. You just have to look it up you know like every single part is what i'm trying to say and then we have foxglove coming in here and iceland poppy uh, california poppy you can use medicinally and i have some of that growing over there but the iceland poppy is just something beautiful i think they call it the champagne variety and then of course we have spinach so i usually just cut it right up the stock here and it grows back all year so we're good there I'm having a tomato experiment and that is, I'm not going to prune it. I'm not even going to tie it up to go vertical. I see. Very exciting. I'm not even going to take from the bottom. I'm just going to see what these plants do and go from there because I've messed with them in years prior and you know, we had some growth, but I just want to see what happens because this is all about experimenting. And then we have a whole thing of zinnias coming in. We have pickling cucumbers over here and then lavender, you know, we could harvest a few if we needed to. We usually just come out here and smell it in the morning cbd buds are coming in coming in well and then the strawberry you know we've given up on because a squirrel was really going to town on it so i guess we will we will grow fruit someday when we get our trees i feel like that is more uh, more of a i guess serious future venture because we'll we'll have some pest control and we'll figure out what to do there and no one will eat our sad little strawberry plant but other than that that's another pineapple stage another cbd another lavender we do have some broccoli coming in i was um, curious to see if it would bolt but i shaded it and honestly it's doing pretty well so i'm gonna let it go and then i did some weeding in here but honestly the uh bindweed really just gets wrapped up in this lettuce so i've just been eating little summer salads every chance i get and then I take from the red lettuce and uh, there's like random red lettuce here, but sunflowers are coming up. I really want to try and take the stalk and make some sort of flower out of it. I saw someone do that. It's very interesting to me. 
And then I need to get some more dirt on these potatoes. I need to put them in tiny little hills and I will just get a lot more potato if I do that. And then if you have never done it, here's your sign. Grab some organic celery at the grocery store, save the butt of it, and then plant it in the ground because we're getting some great celery there and I'm excited to see that come through cone flower of course and then mullion starting to pull in and then it will get that famous top and then we can get all of the medicinal benefits also cone flower over here and i think that's it i think that's all that's new i think you've seen the zinnia and we could oh a dove is trying to bother my chickens and then these are snap peas so we could probably eat these if we wanted to okay do you want a snap pea throw the dove up there mm, let's see if they're crunchy Oh, delish. The thing about our snap peas is they never, whoo! <laughs> they never really make it into a meal, but we just eat them out of the garden. It's a nice little snack, right? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. mm. Very yummy. Put it right here and we can have some. That's a good idea, but they never really make it out, do they? Yeah. yeah. So I think we're just going to go down the line here, have a little snack, and then get back inside and pour the toner. We really need to get that in the refrigerator, but it's been going all day, so very exciting. And then I think I'm gonna make a body scrub and call it good for the day. All right, my chamomile and my sage is in there on the bottom and it kind of got mixed with the rose, but that's okay. And then I ended up just grabbing some more dried rose so we can make our body scrub and go from there. You ready? Can I see? Oh, it's in here. Wanna see the rose? Mm -hmm. It is bedtime, but when we're making fun stuff in the garden, I like them to learn a little bit. Fine. Huh? It's going big one. <laughs> yeah. Those roses are gorgeous. And mommy, They're going to be... Right I see. They're going to be awesome. All right, let's go. Okay. Hopefully it will storm tonight so we don't have to use our water. But Who oh, knows? So excited. So here is my toner. I am just straining out those petals and you can use this for whatever you want. It just has water on it. So sometimes I just put it back onto the root of the rose as just a thank you. And I find that it's really helpful. A lot of people may laugh at that, but I don't know. It's just something that I've always done. Call it a ceremonial thing. But all I'm doing is putting that in a cup and of course spilling it because it wouldn't be a Tory video without me being clumsy. And then I have these amber bottles here and I am adding this clarifying witch hazel toner this is organic you can get whatever you would like here um, they have scented versions of this but I really enjoy the brand Humphreys and I find mine at natural grocers I'm just doing a about a half to half ratio depending on how you want your toner to be I store these in the fridge and I spritz them on probably twice a day and it helps me with an even skin tone so postpartum and pregnancy i really experience dark spots and melasma i do my best to protect my face from the sun but i also really love the sun and we don't do sunscreen so i feel like i have you know age spots i have wrinkles and you know i'm not doing much to prevent it if you do that's totally fine it's just not my path in life so this has been really helpful and it lasts for a very long time in your refrigerator. And then my last recipe of the night is going to be some bath body scrub. And this is not a soak, but you could use it as that. The first thing I showed you was some magnesium flakes, or you could use Epsom salt, 
or you could use sugar, or you could use just regular salt. But I like to use this scrub as just an easy way to get my body's lymphatic drainage working. And I do lymphatic drainage twice a day, and I find that that's really helpful for me. You can use coconut oil or whatever carrier carrier oil you would like, but I do want to state that this is not something that you want to put down your drain. So oftentimes at night, I scrub this on my legs or wherever I need it. I do my lymphatic drainage and then I go do something like water the garden or keep up the chickens for the night. I, I don't know. There's a lot of things that you can do for 20 minutes, fold the laundry. And then I go out in the summer and take the hose and just rinse this off of me. It does have some dried and fresh rose petals in there. Again, helping with an even skin tone, but I am a human. I have a human body. So of course my body has flaws and cellulite and anything you can think of. I just find that this is just such a nice nighttime scrub to have to assist in your lymphatic drainage. So I just take this, I take my dry brush, do that, and then go from there. I put it in one of these swing top masons that I get usually from the thrift store or Hobby Lobby, and then I move on with my night. I usually do a body oil and then go from there. So try this out, very refreshing, and it's just a nice summer kickoff to glowing skin. So there you have it. This is our lineup for the night. I think I stated about our chamomile and our pineapple sage. That will be used in a tea, but you can also make those into tinctures as well. I just like the tea version better. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Definitely give me a like, maybe subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, y'all.